The purpose of this video is to help you find the right unit system for an Abacus model. This is mainly because Abacus as a software doesn't really have a prescribed unit system. So in order to then specify a model correctly, you need to decide on the right unit system that you want to use, specify the properties effectively, and then ultimately get the right result that you want to get. This is what I want to do with this video. So let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. So the virtual domain that we're going to use to illustrate this would be a specimen with a central hole in it, which looks like this. So it's got a, a depth of five units and a width and length of 30 units. And, and this is really important because I want to describe the length associated with these things in terms of units, because we're not going to decide on the unit system immediately. So we're going to just say units. So this unit could be meters, it could be millimeters, it could be micrometers. So that's the first thing we need to bear in mind and of course the hole has a diameter of 10 units so assuming that we're going to work with a unit of meter in meters so one of the parameters that we need to specify would be something like the young's modulus and it will be specified in terms of pascal and a pascal unit system will have basically it's newton per meter squared so that means for gigapascal which will be one of the parameters like the young modulus so we're looking at 10.9 newton per meter squared now if we decide to work with a millimeter system because again abacus doesn't have a prescribed unit system so let's say our system is set up in a millimeter unit system so the parameter that we're going to specify in pascal which is newton per meter squared has to be converted to a unit system of millimeters and so basically a little bit conversion will tell you we're working with a millimeter unit system then our parameter of say Young's modulus has to be specified in Newton per millimeter squared because it has to be this consistency of unit system in Abacus for it to work. So our gigapascal would then become 10 to power 3 Newton per meter millimeter squared. A lot of times students ask me this question. What about if I'm modeling with a micrometer system? Because a lot of the systems that I model on this channel are usually in micrometers. And so how do you deal with micrometer systems? You know, because a lot of them I specify these properties and then you just go on modeling with them. So let's say we have again a parameter of Pascal Newton per meter square, but we want to convert it to a micrometer system. So again, a little bit of conversion, one meter is about 10 to power minus six micrometers. So we can then make the conversion like this. So Newton per meter squared in micrometer conversion, micrometer squared conversion unit system, will basically mean that you're multiplying with 10 to power minus 12. So your gigapascal values will then have to be multiplied by 10 to power minus 12, so that you can then convert that back to a unit of Newton per micro squared meter squared. Admittedly, this is a little bit awkward, you know, as a parameter to interpret and understand. But this is what is required if you want to have a, a unit consistency in your model. At the end, I'm going to reflect a little bit on this in terms of the practicality of its use and offer you how to deal with this. So do watch the end of the video to see how you deal with this kind of system. The material properties that we're going to be using in this model will be based on steel. So the Young's modulus, the Poisson ratio, the yield stress and the plastic strain. So they are specified in the traditional unit of meters. So this will be, like I said, you multiply by 10 power 9 for gigapascal. Poisson ratio is dimensionless and the yield stress is 250 megapascal, which is 10 power 6 newton per meter squared. The initial plastic strain is zero. Now, if we move on to the millimeter unit system, so what we'll then have would be multiplying by 10 power 3 because we established previously that what you're doing with a millimeter system, you're multiplying the whole system, you know, with 10 power minus 6 so that this gigapascal system becomes 10 to power 3 so we're going to use 210 gigapascal 10 to power 3 and then the yield stress will just be 250 as against 250 megapascal so this is the unit of newton per meter squared and then more interestingly in micrometer unit system your young's modulus becomes 210 times 10 to power minus 3 newton per micrometer squared per micrometer squared because you want that un unit consistency and again the last one in terms of megapascal becomes 250 times 10 to the power minus 6 newton per micrometer squared if you're working with a micrometer system so these are the kind of numbers that you're going to throw into the model if you want to then have a, a unique consistency across your system for your modeling now the case study that we're going to use will be again exactly this kind of system so it's going to be held back completely at the back and then we're going to apply a constant displacement unit of six units in the front the case one will be a tensile deformation working with a meter system 
where the unit system is in meter then i'll do exactly the same where the unit is in millimeters and then i'll do the same where the unit is in micrometers and then we'll look at the results in the end if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so so that when content like this are made you'll be the first to see it i also would encourage you to share like and leave me a comment in the comment section of this video of maybe ideas or videos you would like me to make or anything related to the video that interests you let's now go into abacusa to begin this modeling all right so the first thing we're going to do right away is let's create the first case so i'm going to call this case one and this case one will obviously be in units of meters okay so let's start by creating the system we want to use so this is our specimen so it's open hole specimen i'm going to create it by extrusion method and then we'll just move on so we start off with creating that so the origin here is 00, 0 and 30 30 will be what we have in the model there and then obviously the hole would have to be somewhere in the center here so we could dimension that hole just to make sure that yes so it's got a size of 10 units so again remember what we're dealing with here as a unit system so we are not concerned about whether it's in meters in millimeters or not when we start specifying our properties that's when we work with that so let's just dimension them and make sure it's working well so we've got 30 30 and 10 so this is a, a unit 30 units 30 units and 5 units when I think about the units so we carry on and then obviously the depth we want it to be 5 and so that's the specimen that we want to work with and then you know we can then create the materials that we want so remember our material is going to be steel in this instance and the elasticity of steel in a unit system of meter will be 210 e power 9 as we stated before and 0 0.33 will be the Poisson ratio of steel so what about the plasticity of steel the plasticity of steel is 250 e to the power 6 and obviously plasticity strain plastic strain of zero now we specify these properties in terms of meters okay so we have that and then we can create a section so we'll call it a steel section and that steel section will happen as usual so we'll do a section assignment by selecting that material and that's in place so we've got all that we can do a mesh so I'm using a student version of Abacus to do this. So we're going to work with a slightly coarse mesh across the domain. And then what I'm just going to do is on this edge, let me just add maybe three elements on that edge. So we've got three elements on that edge. And then we're going to work with a sweeping technique with media axis transition. And then we'll just go ahead and mesh the model. So if we mesh this model here, we have that. So because we're using a student license, let's just make sure we have the right number of nodes. So, okay, yeah, so we can see that we have 928 nodes. So that means this model can run. If we have up more than a thousand, then we can run the model. So that's a limitation on the student version of Abacus that we're using here. Now we've got the mesh done, we've got all that. So we can create an assembly, an instance. So we've got the instance and then let's create the step. So I'm going to call this a loading step. Okay, so that's an acceptable loading step. And let's think about the boundary condition. So fixed back. So I'm going to fix the back and use an encastre system for that. So we just turn over to the back, select here. So the encastre is accepted. So we've got that it's securely fixed at the back. And then we're going to apply a displacement in the front. So I double click on that. So displace. So something like that. Uh, loading step, displacement. And then we we'll select the front done so we want to use a, a unit of six to represent 20 percent strain on that front so we've got all that we need in this model and then we can just go ahead and submit the job okay so this is the result you get by running the simulation you know in for the case one and if we just look at it on the side so everything looks as we expect um, and, and then just if you look here, you find that the maximum yield strain in the material, the yield stress is 250 uh, megapascal, so 2.5 times 10 to power 8 pascal because our unit system is a meter, so this is in pascal unit. So what we have here is 2.5 times 10 to power 8 or 250 megapascal as expected. So it looks all right and we have the right kind of deformation that we expect for this kind of stimulation. Now let's look at the second case where case two where we are working with the millimeter system what the difference would be so we'll go to the, the system here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just create a copy of this case case one and then call it case two and then i'm just going to call, going, going to call that millimeters 
So that's all. So we've got a second case, which is in millimeters. The only difference, everything will remain exactly the same. We're not going to bother about the length and the width because we are using a unit for our length and width and all that. But what will change if we're working with the millimeter system is the properties that we specify. So remember what we said here would be 210 e to power three. If we're now Newton per millimeter squared, the Poisson ratio is dimensionless. Then this one will be 250 newton per millimeter squared if we're working with millimeters okay and then everything will be exactly the same we just create the job and submit so while this one is running this job is running so let's create the third case and we'll call so we're going to start with that so i'm going to copy this and then this is a micrometer system okay which will be case three okay so again everything will be exactly as we talked about before so the only difference here is that if we check the materials the materials has to now be in this newton pay micrometer squared so remember we said 210 e raised by minus 3 for the young's modulus and then this will be e raised to power minus 6 okay so we've got all that specified so we're simply changing the materials and then we'll go back here and create the job again we've submitted the job so the other one has finished running so we can then have a look at the millimeter system again it looks like what we've did before everything looks all right the only difference you notice here is in the your stress so 2.5 times 10 to power 2 in the previous case we had the 2.5 times 10 to power 8 so now when we're working with a newton per millimeter unit system so our yield stress will be 250 newton per millimeter squared so it's different because we are working with a new unit system here. So this is really where the interesting thing comes in because it depends on what you're trying to do and how you're understanding the model you're working with. So the micrometer system has also finished. So we look at the results. So again, we have a similar result as the previous one. So but our yield stress is now 2.5 times 10 to power minus 4. And that's the biggest stress in this model. So this becomes where, what, what, what really is interesting. So when you're working with units in Abacus, your parameters would be different depending on the unit system that you're using and your result will also be different depending on the unit system also that you're using if we just compare the three so the first one is in meter the second one is in millimeter and the third one is in micrometer the deformation plot is exactly the same in all cases there is no problem with the way deformation the contour plot so clearly it's giving you the right prediction in all cases what is different is in the value of the yield stresses that we're generating depending on the unit system. So for the student that specifies their result in meters, you'll get 250 times 10 to the power 6 Pascal. The student that specifies their system in this will be 250 Newton per millimeter squared. And the student that specifies their system in terms of micrometer will get 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 4 Newton per micrometer squared. And in all cases, this is actually correct because what it's trying to tell you is that if your system is so big that this is 30 by 30 meters in dimension so you need a yield stress of 250 times 10 to the power 6 newton per meter squared to cause the system to fail so it's a significantly bigger system now for the other student that says okay my model is quite small it's just 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters you simply need a 250 newton force in every one meter squared unit for that model to fail so it's a smaller smaller system now for a really tiny model that is this form which is 30 microns by 30 microns you need a 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 4 newton force in every one micrometer square unit for that model to fail so all three models are correct. All three values are correct. So what is the problem really when you come back to analyzing the system is interpreting what these numbers mean. For example, if you're going to publish a paper and you're specifying your result in terms of this strain unit of 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 4, it will be difficult for the reviewer to instantly understand what you're saying because it looks like this is a really tiny stress really really tiny stress in this case and so it becomes difficult to interpret and this is the challenge people have when you're trying to interpret your data when you specify it in such non-standard forms as this or that so you then have to put a note to say okay what unit i'm working with is a micrometer in this case or a millimeter in this case so 
what is the solution to this thing? So what I, I tend to do with my modeling, especially when I'm working in a micrometer unit system, is to defer back onto this. So I would rather specify my properties as if I'm working in a meter unit system so that I'll recover the right kind of results here, which is 2.59 cents power 6, 10 power 8 or 250 megapascal, which is easy to understand for anyone reviewing the paper. But obviously, in the section of my virtual domain, I will specify what I'm calling 20 units is actually 20 micro units. So what I'm spoiling 30 units here, it's actually 30 micro units. So this tends to be how I deal with this in terms of my papers, in terms of the videos that I make in this channel. You find most of the time I'll put in the values directly immediately in and then specify my parameters as if I'm working in a mini unit in a meters unit system because I want this consistency of result in the end because it's easier to understand what's happening by looking at these numbers. However, when it comes to the virtual domain, I will specify within the paper that actually my virtual domain are in terms of a micro meter unit system. That's one thing. The other thing to also think about if you're working with a micro meter unit system is that Abacus would not allow you to specify dimensions less than 10 to the power minus 3 meters. So the smallest unit that it can go is 0.001. So if your micro unit of, two, of 30 micron microns would not be possible to specify in Abacus. So you really need to then work with a unit system like this where you probably just deal with it in terms of units and then you work with the model. So that's all I wanted to show in, in this video and I hope that you get a sense of what is going on with your unit system. There's, if the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this channel so that when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. I was your first love and you were my first one. Chase all the memories of venom and the